On my recent crusade to learn in Bitwig, which is obviously one of the newest, or if not the newest, DAW that's looking to compete with the existing heavyweights on the market, I've come across a few handy features that I haven't done so in familiar DAWs or similar DAWs. Uh, my, my DAW of choice at the moment is FL Studio, but there are some really nifty features in Bitwig that, you know, is kind of making me second think my choice of, of using FL Studio exclusively. I do use Pro Tools as well for some of my mixing duties, but I prefer to keep everything in, in one DAW, so you never know. Over the coming videos in my No BS series, I'm going to be summarizing some of the some of the nifty features I've come across, um, and more, more specifically ones that are a bit more intuitive. I understand that the guys behind Bitwig come from an Ableton background, so there, there are some similarities between both Ableton and Bitwig, but myself personally, I, I could never really get into Ableton. I, I always preferred FL Studio and Pro Tools, and over the last couple of weeks of using Bitwig, it just, I don't know, it just, even though it has this, those similarities, it just feels different, but in a good way. Introductions over. The first of the new features I wanted to cover was Bitwig's slightly different take on snapping features. So by default, the clip doesn't snap to anything. I've got an empty clip on the grid, you can see here, and I can just drag it wherever I like. It doesn't snap to my measure, nor does it snap to any of the lines. And I can just zoom in a little closer just so you can see that better. You can see it doesn't snap to anything. So the first of the free snapping features that Bitwig has is an absolute option. What this does is it snaps to the grid, like so, So my grid snap at the moment is to quarter notes. If I zoom out, sorry, if I zoom in, this will change to sixteenths and you can see that automatically changes. So the absolute snapping respects the change in measure. And the more you zoom in, the smaller the note. And as you can see, it's snapping nicely on the grid. The second option we have is an absolute option. So switch that one off. The best application I can think of is if you have a piece that you've maybe keyed in yourself using the MIDI, MIDI controller and actually played it live, or if you've done some, some heavy processing and you've, you know, played around with the velocities to get, um, particularly on drums, some sort of swing going. So I tend to vary my snares depending on the tempo of the song. If it's got a fast tempo, the drummer may hit the snare early, whereas if it's a slower song, the the drummer may hit it a bit slower. Therefore, there may be instances where you'll want to move the snare a bit earlier or a bit later. So if I switch off the snapping settings, zoom in just a little bit, and I'm just going to drag that so that it's just a little bit behind the grid, just a little bit there. Let's move that just a little bit more. Okay, cool. If I click the relative snapping setting, whenever I drag this, instead of it snapping directly onto the grid, it retains the swing, if, if that's what you want to call it. So it, 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 it kind of respects the programming I've done and retains that to the grid. So rather than me having to, to manually do X number of snare hits or X number of hi-hat hits, I can just equip this setting and then do as I please. For those of you competent with Excel, you'll know that there's an absolute and relative formula implementation and it kind of follows suit in that respect. Because I have to use Excel for work, I already know the differences between absolute and relative. So if you do use Excel, it, it works in the exact same way. The third and final option that we have available to us is an option that is snapped to objects. If the tooltip will display, there we go. So if I add another clip onto the grid, change back to this, what you'll see is it attaches itself directly onto the end of the object. Just turn that off. So scroll that, 
notice how it's kind of like a magnet where it slides and then boom. Nice. So if for whatever reason you want to keep your clips nicely aligned, you've got that option available to you as well. So as I mentioned previously, I am going to be covering some more features of Bitwig in the upcoming videos of my OBS series, but I won't be neglecting my number one DAW of choice still, which is FL Studio. So stay tuned for tips and tricks for both Bitwig, FL Studio, Pro Tools, and any other plugins that, that I feel you guys will benefit from. Until next time. One additional thing I wanted to add that I missed from the original video, so I'm just bolting this onto the end, is that I have a personal preference and it was silly of me not to share that. My personal preference is to use the absolute reference. Now, the reason why I'm sharing with you my personal preference is because you can hold the shift key and that overrides the absolute reference and in effect activates the relative reference. So if I drag that across, as you can see, I've got my absolute reference intact, but if I hold shift, then I can move it freely around as I like. Okay, that's all. Until next time.